Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my channel Science to Technology. In today's show, Camera Tuesday, we're going to talk about camera memory cards. So let's dive right into it. Now, there are two major types of any new upcoming modern cameras. Uh, there are two main formats. First format is CFast Express and then we have old and known SD card format. And there are generally two sizes in both of them. So SD card is one of those things that it's most common. There is 99% chance you know this looks like a SD card. Now there is two physical format in SD card. One is UHS-1, another is UHS-2, basically a physical electrical communication wise. Now there is a UHS-3 that is under construction, but uh, that will have same pin layout as UHS-2. And it will be backward and forward compatible. Basically, it will not add new pins. It will just upgrade the protocol so it can communicate first, faster. So this puppy theoretically is limited to 300 Mbps, capital B, and it, uh, the next generation should be able to go up to 600. So that's the SD card part. And SD card generally comes in only two sizes. There used to be three, but it only comes in two now. Uh, you have full size and you have micro SD card. And micro SD card at this point in time, because of the developments that happened in flash memory, you can find micro SD card that has almost same horsepower as full size ones. And if you are in some situation scenario where you, let's say, bought highest and latest and greatest for your GoPro, you can put them into a card reader and put it into your DSLR or mirrorless and get a comparably good performance. Again, it's not something that should be your first option but in case of emergency in case like you do not have any other option this could work nowadays because the current micro sd cards are really fast and then we come to the granddaddy that is c fast express system they are very new they are very fast and they are idiotically expensive meaning your bank balance is gonna suffer for that now they have three major format basically c fast association when they started to develop this they created three formats format number a is type A. Format number B is type B. Format number C is type C. And they are basically based on the same protocol used by PC industry known as PCI Express. Basically, they are PCI Express wise. And that's why you will hear things like type A is 1x, type B is 2x, and type C is 4x. Now you're like, wait a minute, that sounds literally like PCI Express in computer. So you have like 4x, you have 8x, and then you directly go to 16x. Same thing is happening here. Basically, this card has two PCI lane. This card has one PCI lane. The bigger brother, again, nobody has actually used that bigger brother yet. Um, that's supposed to be ludicrously fast. So uh, basically whatever speed you're going to get, like for example, you can achieve this sort of card supposed to have like again on the package itself, they are saying around 1700 Mbps, uh, half that you will get that into your you know, type A, which is used by Sony. And I genuinely hate Sony for this because every Tom, Dick and Harry, be it Panasonic, be it Ni uh, Nikon, be it Canon, everybody's like, let's use this system. Okay, awesome. GG. Sony themselves use this in their own cinema lineup. It's like, awesome. GG. Why the heck you created type A? It's like, I get it, association design three formats. I get it. You don't have to create garbage, you know? Like Sony has this innate nature that's like, da shall produce garbage. If you're old enough, you know they created a garbage known as Magic Gate. If you don't know it, I, I envy you. It's like, they always have this, it's like, how about we create new garbage? It's like, dude, just use the SD card association. No, it's like here, again, same thing. And consequence of that, right now there is only two cards that you can buy. There is camera. There are like freaking more camera that use this card than there are card manufacturers for this. And ProGrade is the only one that recently released and good luck trying to find that in India. And even in terms of capacity, good luck finding high capacity. They only come to 160. Why don't you use something that is used by everybody? Like Sony has this innate nature. It's like, I'm gonna... I get angry about that. So let's understand the speed aspect of it. Now, speed is one thing that uh, you may cheap out on, but uh, slow card equals poor burst performance and poor video performance. Sometimes you can literally have flat out video fail. I have learned th with this camera and this is a very basic uh, full HD camera, but trust me, this is one of those things that you will notice it. And it becomes more exponentially noticeable if you go into high performance camera. So if you have high performance cam, basically any camera that is around 2 lakh rupees or higher, you know, like A7 Mark IV or uh, like, you know, A1 or uh, R, R series like R1 or something like that, R3, they are generally high performance camera you know you are paying for it and you will know if you have garbage card into them you will know it's one of those things you will know that it's like it does not feel right it's like you know having ferrari engine and having the worn down tire so it's like tire is not gripping it will feel like that now there is one thing you have to understand photos are not that demanding compared to videos especially if you want really high bitrate high resolution videos so in those sort of how do you figure out what exactly do you need generally there is a rule of thumb that every time a video is described in any manual of any camera companies generally they will use mbps meaning small b so what does that mean that simply means you have to multiply that puppy to eight and then you will get the uh, memory speed that would be mbps capital b uh, bits or bytes so what does that translate 
translate to that simply translates to if you have v30 card like a u3 card v30 that means if you are uh, reading the camera manual and camera is saying hey i need uh, 200 mbps don't worry v30 means 240 mbps like basically small that eight division is there now this rating that you see especially in sd card association simply means one core thing minimum sustained right spin what does that mean that simply means if you buy any of these cards especially in the higher end one you will find them if you do read and write test on them they are much faster but then why they have the have a rating solo the rating is solo basically rating as a standardization where it's like i can do this no matter what basically v90 let's say a card is v90 that means it can transmit 90 megabytes per second no matter what meaning it if let's say its operational temperature range is 70 degrees Celsius if the camera is hot to 70 degrees Celsius the card will work if the card is almost full where it does not have the uh, luxury of like you know shuffling file wherever it wants to it will still work at that speed that's the whole point that's the stabilizer and that will be the worst limitation meaning most of the time it will be above that sometimes it will dip uh, till v90 it will never dip below it the moment it uh, dips below v90 that means it has failed the quality qualification system now be very mindful even if you buy a branded v90 card even if you do tests on it it works perfectly over time it will wear down it's like a, it's like a tire it does physically wear down and if you are thinking about fancy things like uh, raw files prores let go of sd card just just let them go like you can try to brute force it buy v90 cards just but just let it go just just let it go let it go because you have to understand type a card even though i hate sony for it is the slow one yes that's absolutely true type a has single lane compared to type b which has double lane but type a still goes to 600 mbps meaning capital b by the way that translates to 4.8 gigabyte per second in video format so that's more than enough and that's why like uh, even fuji film that uh, went into this simply because of that reason if they wanted to give prores you have to have something that's not like i can barely do this barely do this as like 720 mbps now you're like isn't fuji only goes to like let's say 500 or 600 mbps? yeah that is true but again v90 simply means your card is like you hope that card remains in that performance for like you know very long time but this card is like dude even if i lose majority of my performance i will still be above this so and not to mention especially if you want to do open gate recording that can easily exceed this open gate recording can easily open gate means you are capturing the whole sensor rather than 16 by 9 you are capturing the whole sensor can easily reach 1.2 gbps at that point in time you need something like big boy 600 mps and to give you another context of 600 mps that's uh, same limit as seta 3 now why seta 3 is important that's the final iteration of seta and that's the same thing is used by red mags red camera that you know red mags that drive them that's 600 mps so type a is that fast it's almost mag level and type b is like bro type c that's supposed to be made for cinema camera good luck no com no company has even showed a prototype of it yet as in like a working prototype so that's the speed aspect of it these things simply means the worst case scenario and if you are like freaked out like you read the manual it's like manual is saying 150 mps that's generally small b um, divide that by eight or multiply that by eight depending on your situation and you will find out what you exactly need and these rating do wear down do not expect like oh i bought a v30 card and i'm using it for three years fourth year it will be like bro i can't do this anymore it, it will wear down so b mindful of it and if you really need to think about like you know prores or raw do not waste time on sd cards they are too expensive because many times people are considering sd card prices when they are talking about u3 v30 and class 10 they are generally the most popular one on amazon so you may think oh cards are very cheap now the moment you go to high speed and then you compare megabits per second kind of speed then you will find they are not that expensive yeah they are expensive because not enough manufacture is there especially if you are lucky if you are using type b because sandisk has started to uh, you know flood the market with that sort of card it's more than good enough the price like in terms of speed wise it's like more than good enough and you can get uh, what we classify as buffer free performance in some cameras meaning it will keep happening it's like buffer free performance video down below and one of the core aspect of uh, memory is redundancy and this is one thing this uh, keeps specifying and most of you who, who are familiar with uh, pc industry and they knew the transition from hard drive to ssd know for a fact that ssd in the early days had the issue of like you know endurance flash uh, wearing down like you know wear leveling and all that that's the reality that still happens the gate the electron gate that is trapping the electron charge wears down every time you are forcing electron through it again day one and nothing will happen after one million uh, times doing that it will wear down so there is a physical damage that's happening on the system meaning over time it will reach a point of failing if you have a like a very ludicrously high performance car, uh, card that is like literally same price as your dsl let's say you bought d3100 somehow yeah then of course your card will outlive your camera but if you have any modern camera especially in video series especially if it can touch 4k and high bitrate yeah it's gonna wear down card very quickly and this creates a very important point 
you must replace your card periodically and especially the moment it shows any issue meaning if you get any error messages that you know card slow fail to write if it had like one or two times just just replace it do not have a corrupted a card that is like you know almost worn down or at the brink of failure into your main system you will regret it and then dual card this is one thing that uh, many people do not understand again professionals know this and every person who deals with sensitive important non-replaceable data they know this there is a reason why servers have like two hard drive backups minimum they have minimum dual and if it's like really important they will have triple or sometimes they have two whole servers that are in two different states for this exact reason you have to have dual there is no uh, you know going around it because it is a electronic equipment it is equipment made by human head made by human machines so it does fail sooner or later that's why every camera that is not the cheapest end generally will have dual card option no matter which one it is and it has always been there it will always be there it's a very good thing and you must utilize it if you really want to basically anything that you cannot do retake just just get dual card system anything like for example sports wedding people have lost their system and uh, when that happens at that point in time people are like oh that's why you know expensive cameras have this option and one personal advice always have spare card in your bag and it's it's a common thing that every senior photographer will tell you flat out it's like have always have one fully working spare card in your camera bag because i guarantee you especially if you pull out your card and put it in a card reader and read it uh, you're gonna forget it one time and it has happened to me that's why i'm like saying this is personal for me now it will happen to you not today maybe tomorrow 10 years from now but it will happen make this into a habit that you have spare cam camera cards into your camera bag and take care of your card Take care of your card simply means do not do excessive injection and all that basically how you take care of your camera you don't just toss it don't do the same thing with your sd card sd card is solid state that is absolutely true but it is still packages soldered on pcbs so if you do that that puts a stress on what you call solder balls and they crack that happens that's why that shall put you know minimum maximum care into your cards basically the gentler you are with your cards the more longer they're gonna last and not to mention there are physical contacts that are doing like this literally is gonna wear off so do not do excessive like you know plugging in and plugging out try to minimize that make it into a habit basically you plug it in remove everything and then just pull out the card just one action don't be like you know i like oh I, for i thought i forgot another card let me put it again no. try to make a habit where you do minimize those things because they do wear down those contacts if they wear down too much they will have electrical failures so you must be gentle with your card or you will suffer at that point don't blame anyone else you will suffer of that and please buy good card readers this is one of the things many people have the issues where it's like you know they are so scared of the card being corrupted they are using usb from the camera to directly dump file again that was very bad uh, option in the back simply because the usb bus that was utilized by camera was usb 2.0 so it was super slow even though usb 3 has been in market for like many decades at this point in time and mo thankfully modern systems do goes faster but again if you are in professional environment you will have something like this they are like ludicrously fast it can dump as the fastest rate possible so that's generally always will be faster than what you can do in your camera so the reason many time people have faulty issues simply because card readers are the garbage and if they do not have good power uh, equipment basically the power supply that is uh, providing the voltage reel to sd card it can corrupt it so that's why like expensive card readers exist and there is a reason why professional people will never touch anything below this i have provided that video also down below check it out again it's one of those little things but it's uh, if your uh, you know work is uh, non replaceable you will be like you know what let me spend a bit more on the card reader don't buy the cheapest card reader you can find try buy, uh, buying a card reader from a reputable brand who has good uh, drivers and all support you will be okay with it so what is the importance of all these things yes it's expensive that's the most painful part you will have to realize but you have to understand do not be like a poor person who buys an iphone uh, basically how louis rossman talks about this is like you know a person is poor who has bought an iphone but cannot buy a replacement cable because iphone cables are amazingly amazing they break very quickly so every time there's like you know dude why the heck you're buying a cable that is like you know one dollar you know for a fact if like apple's 60 dollar cables are breaking one dollar cable is not gonna last it's like they cannot afford it they just bought iphone to show iphone but they can't afford it so don't be like that for Photography is an expensive hobby. Cameras are expensive. They are multi thousand dollar equipment. Do you really want to be that person who's like, you know, have a hundred thousand dollar lens and I have like hundred thousand dollar camera body and it's like, I have the, the most cheapest card there? No, you don't want to be there. Photography is ex expensive and expected, especially in videography, as more and more people are expecting more and more things. There were a sweet spot time where everybody was like, okay with the HD. Now it was like, we want 4K. It's like, why? It's like, we want 4K. It's like, okay. Now somebody is like, we want 8K. It's like, do you have a display that can show you 8K? But it's one of those things. 
and if you have dual card slot this is one common mistake especially people who do not have a deep enough pocket they will never use it what does that mean they will simply marathon it meaning they will let up one card fill up then they will switch to second card then they'll fill it up that's not redundancy that's useless you are still vulnerable to one point of failure and that's just not good now assuming you have the professional grade equipment which allows you know same card to be utilized for both slots meaning uhs2 both of them uh let's say type a cards um c fast expert type a both of them that's awesome then you can do raw to both and if you are in a scenario where it's like one of them is the faster card another one is a slower one like let's say sony a7 mark 4 like one is a c fast express another is a sd card in those scenarios do raw plus hif do not do raw plus jpeg anymore hif format is like a good compromise between jpeg and raw performance it does have much higher bit depth so meaning you can recover surprisingly a lot so if you have good enough hif file setups you will be happy you will be happy basically unless you do extreme uh, touch-ups to your file you will be able to sell uh, your client hif files so having hif as a backup is a good option and videos is very brutal on your card be aware of that you may be like dude i was doing photography for like 10 years and never had an issue with card and now it's like you know every other year my card is dying yeah videos are brutal especially if you have itch of like you know highest and fastest frame rate if you have that itch i want 120 fps yeah your card is gonna suffer it's not a hard drive it's not a nvme system it's not designed to work at like server level load it will wear down so have separate budget for your card. That is something that you have to have. It's like memory, certain amount of budget. Every two years, you're going to cycle it. If you're serious about your work, trust me, do it. It's almost like why server companies just let throw away the hard drive that are completely working. They're like, I will not risk my multi-billion dollar data on multi million dollar equipment simply because I was like, you know what? I want a bit more life out of it. No, no, no. Toss it out. Put new one in, GG. It's like same happens with uh, like, you know, linear uh, bearings that is used in industry. It's like the linear bearings that industry wear out. It's like, dude, it's awesome. It's working. It's like, yeah. But it's like 50% of the lifespan is still there. The, the company but will not risk it. It's like, bro, the work that we are doing is so high paying that it's like we can afford it. And we have to afford it because messing it up is like so expensive. So have separate budget for your card. And if you have any issue with your card, uh, you may not know this, but cards have warranty, especially high speed ones from a brand one, they have warranty. You can try RMA. If you are in India, RMA simply means basically sending it to one place in Mumbai and uh, SanDisk does that. I have used that uh, SanDisk service for uh, replacing my pen drive, RMA. RMA simply means you have to create a basically fill out a forum. They will tell you the address, you mail your part there. They will generally, generally most of the time, they will send you a new one or refurbished one. And uh, it's much uh, better. To, like, again think of this if cards are expensive equipment like let's say you have 200 dollar card and it's like you have to spend let's say ten dollars or twenty dollars to you know parcel it it's worth it if you get a new working card for it that's that's awesome that's worth it and change it do make sure that you change it no matter whatever whether you do rma that's a different thing but do change it do not have that in your you know make work, work you know cycle so you do not get this message movie recording has been stopped automatically slow card right speed this has happened to me on this camera multiple times that's how i learned this the hard way that you have to wear down cards uh, you know keep replacing them and that's why like very early on i was like full hd 60 fps my cards are like ah bro no bro like again if you add uhs2 system but again the ca camera is 800d it does not have uhs2 every two three years i have like my cards are like no and this is sandis extreme pro they do not last very long so and again i'm using video recording 10 videos per week continuously for four years so the cards are lasting even two years that's amazing but you get that point it will happen to you the moment it happens throw that card that card should be your backup card or backups backup card but should not be your main card and rma it if it's a very expensive card and even if you have one card system in your camera try getting external monitor and recorder for backup and proxy trust me having anything is better than having nothing people have learned this the hard way so trust me you do not want to go the hard way so this was my presentation on camera memory uh, cards. Hopefully you have liked it, learn from it. In that case, please click the like button, share it amongst your friends. That will help me a lot. If you didn't like it, didn't enjoy it, I urge you to press dislike, press it twice to show me extra disappointment. Please leave a comment because I do try to reply to all of them. Subscribe, press the bell icon if you're free. And as always, thanks for watching.